And it looks Falling like in on the right side. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm snatching your thunder, my friend. Have a way at it. All I right. really love this part. All right, spawning in on the right side is going to be B playing as the Mongols in blue, and to the left is going to be Kaposh playing as the red French. Opening up with the second scout right at the beginning, whereas on the other side we do have the Ovu already placed for B quite far away from the town center. That's definitely something that helps the French potentially contest it. But the th thing that's a lot more concerning, I believe, for B is that his gold distribution is quite terrible. The hunts are rather far away from the town center as well. So in general, aside from the fact that B's town center is in between the two wood lines, there is not a lot of things to love about this town center. No, I'm, I'm glad you highlight that. That's what I wanted to look at is the fact that like B, at first sight, you're like, this is brilliant. I'm up against French. I have a choke point. I'm protected. There's no way he can reach me. And then you're like, Wait, guys, wh where's my gold line? And the smirk is just increasing on Kapoch's face. Like, where, where is my food lines? Kapoch, what did you do with them? They're, they're just all out there in the middle of no man's land. The one upside I can see for B is when you look at the back of his base, he did get that juicy double deer spawn basically on top of each other. I like to call this a mating ground spawn, right? Where they've clearly been at it because all the deer are just located close by like they're a family. And there is even a batch of berries right next to it. So you could oh. really sort of fortify this position and just base your entire food eco over here. But this is always dangerous because as long as you do have the double patch of huntables right next to each other and you're not being attacked, it's great because it's very effective. You don't really have to move your villagers to other positions on the map to get food. But it also means that if the enemy controls this part of the map, it's raiding left and right with knights, you'll be cut off from all accessible food because you have no backup to fall back to. Absolutely, and that's the thing. Like you know, we, we look at this back spawn. We're like, oh, this would be gr great if you were Delhi, right? If you were England, whatever. Like, oh, great, you can just wall up, protect yourself against France. Wait a second, that's forbidden in the Mongol society. You cannot wall, and that's the concern. Is that even if you try to protect yourself with these outposts, these French knights are tanky. They have a lot of missile resistance. They will just dive past outposts into your squishy eco lines, and that's where B has to be careful. I think it'd be fair to say this entire matchup really comes down to who's able to be the tempo set, who's the aggressive party, because that is the person most likely to win out in a Mongol-France matchup. Looks like we're going to have a barracks coming out here for B, opening up with the Spearman. So a very similar approach to what we have seen from Kaposh in game number one. But there's a difference here. If there's any civilization that's particularly vulnerable to the Spearman tower rush, that's going to be the French. Because as we discussed, they rely heavily on that gold income. They age up with the school of cavalry. So their primary unit that they want to go for is cavalry. Either knights or horsemen, but preferably knights. Uh, Which means that if they get cut off from gold, they are in trouble. I mean, and this is doubly bad thing... as well, right? Like the, the yep. gold line is right next to your wood line. That The way Kapoch has set up his base, two outposts could deny him both the critical resources he would require to deal with B in this game. Yeah, it's a little tricky because Kaposh has that gold mine at the back, so it couldn't really get any better than this. If that gold mine was on the front, it would be much easier for B to deny this. And the question is, what does B see from his opponent's base? And the answer is that he's aware of that gold mine, so he's going to loop all the way around. Kaposh sees the villagers, however, so he knows exactly that they are coming. The question is, what can he do? His cavalry won't be able to fight off the spearmen. He might need to pull villagers here, just like we have seen in game number one. It, it's different this time around, right? When it happened last time, it was against Delhi, right? The Delhi could heal the damage done. So this time, you might have some casualties if you engage with villagers with spears already here. And the Mongol was able to ramp up so quickly, already having four spears on the front. And although try to deny him, or try to burn down this outpost, it might cost him a few of his villagers to do so. The brawl is going to start. Blue village is going to shift away. Kapoch has to retreat away from this as the Khan is now arriving. The only thing you can do is try to delay his opponent from getting this up, but the outpost is underway. And if he gets denied on the gold already, he's going to be in trouble. That's why he's still gathering with two. He wants enough to get one or two knights out so he can actually do something about it. But the question is, what can he do? Because he still has a long way to go before he's going to be able to afford an archery range and the units required to deal with this Zerg of Spears. And the mining camp is now under attack by those spears. So oh now you're going to lose that mining camp. That's going to give resources to B. And you can't even delete this because it already took damage. So even if you delete this, B would get the resources. And that house lying out there is also concerning. Because that's also a prime target for B. He should be able to burn it down without the town center being able to interfere. And the second tower will be dropped. Counter tower coming in here by Kaposh. React to that. 
I still believe that B has to be happy with all that. the reactions that he was able to force. Yeah, B's going in. He's just going to go in for it because he can just trade out the spears. It looks like it's not enough to scare off Kapoch. Villagers will continue their construction on both sides, and it looks like Kapoch will be able to get his outpost down first. As a result, B will back off. The bad news, however, is Kapoch, unless he keeps scouts around the side, keeping eyeballs on this, he can't deny the backup outpost. And that means he can still be denied on the wood line, which means he won't be able to get the archery range online and get the counter to these spears. And he's going again. Villagers once again being pulled. They do not have textiles, as you said before, and the spearmen are in good numbers over here, so Kaposh has to sort of trade villagers here to try and stop this tower, but as you see, it's not going to work. It's it not going to like work at, at all. all. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get one villager in the end of this, maybe. No, he doesn't even get that. 2 HP. Little Timmy's going to live. He'll full Gary onto the outpost, but the scout's being dead. He's having to use villagers to give vision, and that is not a good situation. Kapoch in trouble, now down to 21 eco compared to the 20 of B, but B now knows there's nowhere for Kapoch to go. Yeah, Kapoch lost two villagers to that tower fire, and he also lost his second scout, so now Kapoch is also completely blind. He's losing access to his wood lines, he's just now scrambling for an archer range, his opponent is on the way to feudal age as we speak, but the big thing is that damage was done. Kaposh isn't able to go for a lot of knights here, and he has to relocate all his lumberjacks. Notably, he's also starting to run low on sheep, and his berries are also oh being denied by that outpost. Things are just piling up on top of Kaposh's head right now. Now, the good news for him is this. B hasn't stationed a scout on the north side, because he accidentally sacrificed it. You, you mentioned things that were blind. That guy was blind. He ran straight into the TC of his enemy. Because if he kept it on the north side, he'd know where Kapoch is right now. He is getting access to wood, and this might be a problem. That's why B has to move shift across quickly here. And the villagers are wrapping around on the north to ensure this. So if they're quick, they should be able to deny this. And it'll be good time as well, because B has almost completed his own tech up into feudal. There is the first oh. knight coming out here from Kaposh to Kalon to counterattack. That's going to be a little annoying for B to deal with, but he's got some spears back at home. He's going to have the Yam Speed Network to work with. So he's going to be able to protect his uh, important resources on the right side. He's got defensive towers out there. I don't think Kaposh will be able to do much with one or two knights counterattacking. Oh. And he's starting to add archers, uh. but the Mongols can just add those a lot faster. Why add archers when you can just add outposts? He's doing it. And it's a distraction with the spears on the south side. He's going to find value from them, force him off of the wood line. And in the meantime, the outpost is still going on up of the north. And, and Kaposh doesn't know. He doesn't even know it's going to be there. So once these spears are gone, he might feel safe. But that is a fake sense of security, as he will quickly discover. And the villagers building it, one of them is just so heavily damaged here for B. But he, <laughs> he was able to keep that alive for so long. And that's going to help making that tower happen a little faster. And now Kaposh is going to have a tough time accessing Vood over here. He's got the first couple of archers over here. Now, the knight launched a counterattack, did not accomplish much. But as we talked about this one, Kaposh is struggling for resources really badly. He can't afford more knights. And soon, with those towers oh. harassing lumberjacks, he won't even be able to afford archers at this pace. This is the, the gambit moment. Like, if Kapoch cannot get access to the mining camp, if another outpost goes down that denies him, this game is all but un unassailable. You can't recover. So it's critical he gets this mining camp down and gets access to the gold. For the moment, it looks like that is going to be the case. But as you said, B, he should be prepping something else. As it stands, no. He hasn't switched over. He hasn't dropped an archery range, which means he's only got spears to answer these archers, which we know is not a good trade. Not at all. And he feels a little overcommitted into this tower rush because he's going to need something against those archers very soon. He's popping out some spears over here trying to pursue those. But once Kaposh is able to get a couple of knights out, suddenly that Ovu could be very exposed. And with it, the barracks as well. And there is still no additional production building right now for B. You gotta wonder what exactly his plan is because you just don't see any more army added. Maybe he was thinking about trying to fast castle this, hoping that Kaposh was set back very heavily. But that is just a distant dream right now for him. I, it is a weird one, but there is still hope for B fans. Look at the outpost. It's going down. And Kapoch, he's noticed it too late. He's going to shift away, but his goal line is going to be exposed. He doesn't see it. He doesn't have vision here. No scouts in play for Kapoch because they were assassinated before and never replaced. It means he will be denied in the gold, and it means he's once again going to be in trouble. An opportunity maybe for B to recover. And look at that, Kaposh has to once again migrate to find another forest to chop trees at. And that's <laughs> the only saving grace right now for B, because B didn't really have a lot of answers to what Kaposh was doing in the last one or two minutes. But as you said, a tower goes up on the gold mine, immediately popping out the arrow slits as well for B. And Kaposh is just mass migrating to the right side. 
to a point where soon he's going to be taking the opponent's resources because he's getting closer and closer with those wills to the base of B. Yeah, he's trying to outdo the Mongols on their migration in this situation. Uh, and it has to be said, B, he hasn't left himself exposed at home, right? We mentioned he hasn't made a switch over, it's just Spearman as it stands, but he has at least protected his greed, right? Like, he's got outposts down near his Gurs to make sure he can't be raided by the, the French cavalry. And he has got this double stable play. So there is something now for him to play into, and it means that with Kapoch extending himself so wide, Horseman could just ruin this game for him. And a new outpost is going down again! And he once again doesn't see it. This is all hidden every time B. Just understanding vision to the maximum is once again getting an outpost down successfully. Or is he? Knight? Look oh, at that. no! The knight! He's pulling away. He's pulling he away the knight with the con. That was such a great idea from him. Oh, but it looks like it's enough to scare him off. B. He has to back away. He's not able to get the outpost up in the end. And as a result, he will deny him. The Khan is going to go down as well. There are still a lot of archers out in the field, and B does need to get these horsemen online finally. Feels like they should have been coming a little bit sooner. His greed may have hurt him, because now he's in an awkward transition. With the triple pasture drop, you understand that he's draining resources too fast. He, it's almost like he thought this game was going to be over by now. Yeah, he doesn't have food. And it's a little surprising to me that he's not even taking those hunts. I mean, of course, there is some pressure coming from Kaposh, but those hunts are still rather accessible. And the thing is that he needs to amp up this pressure right now. He needs to leverage the advantage that he has gotten. Because Kaposh is slowly recovering and suddenly those archers are marching towards that very exposed gold mine over here. Oh boy. We're a ram as well. Garrison's going to come out. I'll scare away the archers. And now the horsemen can reveal themselves. And that is a lot of investment in an archer force which would instantly just die to a few horsemen. That might be the case. They'll chase in Yam movement speed there to make sure they gap close quickly and the villagers will address the ram. More spearmen also coming out to make sure that B has somewhat of a composition to deal with the knights. And while the horsemen will stick on top of the archers, and the vanguard of villagers will get through the ram, now he needs to address the knights arriving. The problem is with only one or two spears, it's too easy for the remaining archers to clean them up. And it means that B is going to have to back away from this, because soon he's going to lose all the horses. I think he's uh, willing to trade off the horses at this point to the archers, because he just wants to slow this game down a tiny bit. He knows exactly that he sort of had some food issues over here, had to add the pasture. So right now he's just trying to slow this game down a tiny bit because not only is he the one losing a lot of uh, access to the food eco, Kaposh as well. And Kaposh has to start adding farms. Right now Kaposh has basically no food eco working and that's going to slow down the production of the knights quite considerably. And there is enough spears for B to hold off the knights if there isn't really a lot of archers to fight them. Nah, uh, speaking of those knights, pokes of the sticks will scare them away it's really hard to actually mid max this as well i mean this is the oppressive nature of yan movement speed 1.44 movement speed on these spearmen and that's without the charge factor it means you always have to be looking at your knights or in the blink of an eye you can all of a sudden just lose your french knight battalion indeed and let's not forget that kaposh's gold mine here is very exposed so the moment that B is able to launch a counterattack, suddenly things could get very ugly oh. for uh, Kaposh over there. Knights are launching a counterattack, not enough space for all those villagers to fit into that tower, but you get the Yam Speed Network so they can escape from the knights really fast, and the Spearman can catch up very easily. So you see, with that Yam Speed boost for B, and of course the vision provided by the towers, he's able to see those knights and react them. Just look at the vision he has for a moment across the map. Yeah, he, he's just oppressing his opponent, right? He's able to react before Kapoch can do anything. And Kapoch, I was going to say this, has finally dropped an outpost at that gold vein. This was so risky. Finally, he has some layer of protection, but I'm not sure how good it's going to be. There's not enough room here for all the villagers. And once B sees them, he just licks his lips. He's like, oh my. He licks lips, shakes the hips, and jumps straight in. He'll go straight onto the villager line. He's trying to body block him with the knights to the best of his ability to allow the villagers to get away safely. But it's difficult. And he's trying to rush more outposts. This is his mistake. So many French players do this. They get greedy. And instead of preemptively having protection in place, they have to position it after their opponents arrive. And it's going to be a massacre. There's so many villagers here and nowhere for them to run. And Kapoch, slow to shift them away, means he's going to take heavy casualties on the retreat. This is the only place where Kaposh is getting food from. He has to fight this one with oh the villagers because he can't afford to lose that wood line. He can't afford to lose those farms. That's the, his entire economy on this screen right now. He's lost everything. The knights are dead. Only one remaining. As you said, he can't access the farms and he needs the wood to build more farms. This might be it. Khan is going to go down again. B just parting a little bit too hard, but what does he care? Similar to game one, he will throw bodies at the equation and come out ahead as he will win out on Dry Arabia.
What a crazy game over here. It really felt like B sort of hit a roadblock at like the middle of the game. His tower rush went well at the beginning. He was able to force Kaposh off the resources. And his reactions were very nice. Kaposh tried to pull villagers. He was able to save his forward villagers all the time. Kaposh wasn't able to take down those initial towers. But then B just hit sort of a roadblock over here. He ran out of food. And for a moment, it seemed like Kaposh is just going to grind him down. But then Kaposh himself also ran out of food. And ultimately, what mattered for Kaposh is that he never really was able to clean up any of those towers that were built next to his base. So he always was just on the move, forced to fight for every bit of a resource that he wanted to grab. I mean, that, that is the weird part about what you saw B done. I think there's going to be a lot of people that look to this and like, 